Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card video. Today I have what's called a never ending card. It's also called an infinity card and it just keeps going and going. So here I am at the beginning, sending you a big bear hug. You are amazing. And it just keeps going around and around. It's such a fun card. I decorated my card with the Happy Panda set by My Favorite Things. I'm also using this sentiment, sending you a big bear hug. And then I also pulled this uh, striped greeting set by Simon Says Stamp for another sentiment. The actual card is pretty easy to make. Mine's going to fit into an A2 envelope. So I'm going to start with four and a quarter by 11 inch sheet of cardstock. I'm using black Stampin' Up. The other thing you'll need is a trimmer that has measurements in 1 16th of an inch. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut and score using this trimmer since my scoreboard doesn't score in 1 16th of an inch increments. My finished card is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. If you wanted to make a larger card, you wouldn't need 1 16th of an inch increments. Um, but I need it because there are some pretty small pieces in this size card. So what I'm going to do first is cut this piece into four pieces that are four and a quarter by two and an eighth. And I'm actually going to have a little bit left over. The next step is to take all four of these pieces and score them at one and one sixteenth of an inch. So I'm just using my bone folder and my trimmer to score them both at one and one sixteenth from each side. And I'm going to do that with all four pieces. Now that they're scored, I'm going to fold them in both directions. You can see now flip it over, fold in the other directions and really make a nice crisp fold with my bone folder. And I'm going to do this um, on each side of each one of these pieces. Next, I'm going to take two of those pieces and I'm going to measure the midline mark. So it's going to be because it's two and an eighth wide, I'm going to mark one and one sixteenth. And I'm going to do it on both sides. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to mark the center point because that's where my glue needs to go. I want to stop my glue at the center point. You'll see what I mean in just a second. I'm going to take these two pieces that I just marked and I'm going to position them horizontally right up next to each other. I want these two pieces to be stable next to each other while I do my gluing. So I'm going to flip them over. And then I'm going to grab some of my surgical tape and I'm going to temporarily um, tape them together into place right next to each other. So I'm going to flip this back over and now I'm ready for the gluing. I'm going to use liquid glue because I want to have some time to kind of wiggle it around into place. And remember those pencil marks I made halfway down those pieces and that's going to mark my glue line. So here I'm going to put glue on all four corners. So I'm basically coming down about 1, 16th, 1 and 1 16th of an inch and across 1 and 1 16th of an inch and I'm putting my glue down. And now I'm not going near my score lines at all. So you definitely want to keep inside those and don't put too much glue to where it might seep out into where those score lines are. So you want to be pretty conservative with your application of glue, but you do want to make sure that you hit the corners to make sure that this um, card is going to fold correctly. Now remember these two pieces are the ones that are set horizontally. Now I'm going to take my next two pieces and I'm going to position them vertically and I'm just going to place them right on top of the first two pieces and just press them securely into place. Now you may not have this line up exactly, but we're going to worry about that in just a minute. Now remember, we put the surgical tape in place on the back to make sure that they wouldn't move. So hopefully you won't have any problems getting these glued down in the right place. Once they're glued down, you can flip it over and take off the surgical tape. I went ahead and let that dry for just a couple of minutes. And now I want to crease it into place so it's really easy to kind of flip through. So the first thing I'm going to do is open the card up. And it should open pretty easy because you scored and um, creased all of those 1 and 16th marks beforehand. But I'm going to go ahead and redo that again just to make sure that it'll lay flat in each of its positions. So now I'm going to take the middle and pull it out and it'll flip over again. And then I'm going to use my bone folder to crease that down on all four of these sides. And then I'm going to flip it one more time. So it's coming from the center and coming outward. And then this one doesn't have any more creases. It's just flat. I'll flip it. Actually, this is the last time. 
and this doesn't have any more creases. So it really doesn't have too much that you have to recrease. But what you want to do is you want to keep flipping it multiple times. And if you encounter somewhere it gets stuck, um, it's easily fixable. So I'm going to show you here where it gets stuck just a tiny little bit. You want it to really flow free, freely. But it's kind of overlapping a little bit right here. And that's pretty easy to fix. In fact, this happened to me on pretty much every version I created. It just is a little bit of an overlap where one piece doesn't line up with the other piece. So you just have to take a scissor and go around all four sides of this piece of cardstock and make sure that you have each of those sides perfectly lined up. And if you don't, then just cut off the excess, whichever side it is. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure that all sides are exactly flush with each other. Believe it or not, that is it for the card base. So pretty easy to make. Now it's time to decorate it. Since there are so many sides, I decided to keep this really simple. So I just chose one color. It's Simon Says Stamp Green Apple. And I cut all of my solid pieces ahead of time. Each side of these pieces is either two inches or 15 sixteenths of an inch, which I like to think of as one inch minus a sixteenth on my ruler. My decorated pieces are just really simply stamped pieces. And I just cut a long piece of four and a quarter by 11 inch cardstock. This is Nina Seller White. And I'm gonna stamp the whole thing and then I'll just cut off the pieces that I need. I'm using the bamboo stamp from the Happy Panda set. And I have my Simon Says Stamp Green Apple and I'm stamping these with some space in between for the next set. And for that, I'm gonna stamp the same stamp using green leaf this time. And again, leaving a little bit of space for my third color of green. I'm just trying to give some variation of color here. And then finally, a set of bamboo in electric lime. It's a Ranger dye ink pad. I'm also gonna need some pandas. So I'm gonna stamp these with Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I'm gonna color them just a little bit with some Copic markers. I'm gonna be using W1 and zero. Um, these pandas are super easy to color just to add a little bit of dimension. So all I'm really doing is adding some shadowing since it's already white and I want to keep it that way. So I took my W1, I just outlined the edges pretty quickly um, of this panda around his head, around his body, and underneath his neck. And then I'm taking my zero colorless blender and I'm just going over the line that's created by drawing with the W1 and pushing that color kind of to the edge and it darkens up as it gets to the edge. So this is a really simple way to add some dimension without too much work. And I'm gonna do the same exact th thing on all three of these pandas. And once I get them all colored, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out. Because I'm gonna be adhering these pandas to cardstock that's not white, then if there's a white outline, it might show up against the background. So I just took a black marker and I colored the edges of all these pandas so that if there was any white showing, it would be colored black and you wouldn't notice. I'm also gonna prepare my sentiments. They're gonna be white on black. So I'm gonna stamp one at the bottom here to use the bottom edge, and then I'll stamp the second one at the top to use the top edge. I'll sprinkle them with some white embossing powder and then heat it to set it. And then I just have to make two cuts with my trimmer, one underneath the first one and one on top of the second one. Now I'm ready to start adhering my pieces to the card base. Now you can see there's crease lines here and there's gonna be different crease lines depending on which part of the card you're looking at. So for the first part, I'm gonna fill in the bottom with these two green apple pieces and then I'm gonna fill the top two with bamboo. The pieces are cut to have a 1 16th of an inch mat around each side. If you remember, those green apple pieces were two inches wide, so I'm gonna cut two strips two inches wide from this bamboo piece. And then I can cut the width. So my top piece is going to be 15 sixteenths of an inch, so I'm gonna cut that off with the trimmer, which is one minus a sixteenth, and that'll be my top piece. My next one is going to be two inches, so this is a two inch by two inch square. And then whatever's left over, I'm gonna discard because I have that solid green piece at the bottom. So now I've just cut my top and middle pieces for that first panel. I'm gonna take this other strip, two inch strip that I cut and do the same exact thing. So I could get two pieces out of this one as well. I'll take all these pieces and adhere them to the first part of this card with an ATG tape runner. I also want one of my pandas to be on the front panel. So I'm gonna take him, I actually, put some ATG tape runner on the back and then decided that 
uh, I really wanted to glue him on. So I added some dots of glue and uh, put him on there to make sure that he was really secure because you don't want anything popping up on this card. Everything needs to lay flat. For each of the sentiments, I'm going to be cutting them up into pieces. So for the front panel, I'm just going to use two of these words. So I'm just going to carefully cut between them with a scissor. And then I'll put some uh, Tombow glue on there so I have some kind of time to maneuver it around to get it where I want it. And uh, that'll be my front panel completed. I'm going to open this up to reveal the next part of the card that needs to be decorated. This part has some pretty narrow strips. They're 15 16 of an inch, so everything is really consistent. So I cut them from the main bamboo uh, cardstock that I stamped, and then I'm going to cut them. This needs three different pieces. So I'm going to cut the first one at 15 16 of an inch, and then I'll cut the next one at two inches, and you'll see that this is all very consistent. Once you figure out the measurements at the beginning, then you just need to use them over and over again. So this is two inches. And then finally for the bottom, I'm gonna have 15 16 of an inch again. And I'm going to discard that little white piece that's left over, because I don't need that. And uh, that'll be the same for the left side and the right side. For the middle pieces, I'm gonna use the two two inch by two inch pieces I cut of the green apple cardstock. I'm gonna have a panda on this top one. I wanna ground him with some grass. So I just marked where I was gonna put him and, uh, with a pencil. And that way I knew where to start my grass, just a little bit below that. So I'm using some YG15 and just flicking it upward. And then I'll fill it in with some YG03. And this is just so it doesn't look like my panda is floating. I'll add a little of the Tombow Mono Multi Glue and place them right there on the grass. I'm going to add the rest of that sentiment to the bottom panel. So I'm going to cut it into pieces just like I did the first part. And I'll put them into place with some glue and my tweezers. I'll start in the center and then work my way out so that it, they'll be centered when I'm finished. And that completes the second part of the card. I'll open this to reveal the next part. And you can see that those other two pieces are duplicated. It's the only time where I'll see the same portion of the card twice. So I just filled the center with a lot of the green apple pieces that I had already cut. I realized that I needed you are, not your. So fortunately, this stamp set comes with a you are of the same font. So I just went ahead and created that one to use. Just like with the other one, I'm gonna cut this into pieces and put one on each side. And that will complete the third part of the card. So we have one more left. So I will open it up to reveal the last part of the card. I skipped over the part where I filled in the green apple and the bamboo pieces. Now I'm cutting my amazing word out and I'll put some Tombow glue on the back and adhere it to the top portion of the top piece that's left. And then I also put some glue on my panda and I, hang, I hung him kind of off to the corner here like he was gonna be peeking in and then I trimmed off the bottom of his body so it looked like he was kind of popping into this little square. I left my bottom square empty to put my little written sentiment. So back to the beginning. Here we are sending you a big bear hug. You are amazing with your personal message. And then back to the beginning. And that is the card for today. So I think it was a little time consuming, but um, I think it's pretty easy to follow. If there's a lot of consistency, there's a lot of repeatable elements. So hopefully you'll find it easy yourself and you'll make it. Anyway, so I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.